Good morning, everybody. It's a Friday morning. Finally getting some decent weather. We've got blue skies. It's been raining a lot here. We got a 50 by 28 basement floor we're doing. These guys move double wide homes on top of these. So it's going to be just kind of for a double wide. But we're going to get this going. We got two loads coming, regular floor mix, and we are ready to go. Hey guys, so as we watch this video, I just wanted to talk about something, something that was probably the most difficult thing that I've ever had to do. And it definitely, it definitely relates to concrete, but it's also personal. And, you know, I haven't probably ever talked about this publicly. Only a very few people know this, but I did want to share it with you guys just in case, you know, maybe there's someone out there in a similar situation that I was or someone that has to make a tough decision and you know maybe this will help them get through it a little bit but anyway just a little backstory on it when i first started in concrete i was young i was like 15 years old my girlfriend in high school her father did this he had his own business he did stuff just like we're doing right here on the camera uh, and he did some commercial stuff too so you know while i was in high school I decided I'd, I'd go to work for him. So I worked all summers. I worked school vacations. Any day I could work for him, I worked. And I did that I did that for, you know, sophomore year, junior year, senior year. The year after, I did, I did go into a community college the year after I graduated. But I still, every, every spare day that I had, I would work for him. I would work for him after classes. Um, just as much as I possibly could up until the, the second year of college. So at that point, I was, I was like 19 years old. His, I was still going out with his daughter. This guy had basically mentored me. He was like a second father to me. Um, I came from a split family. My parents had divorced, had divorced at a very young age. I was like fourth grade. So this guy kind of molded me from being a very immature teenager into a, you know, a, a young man teaching me what work is about, what life is about, you know, get up early, work hard, you know, make a good wage. And I was doing all that all through high school. So, you know, I, I definitely, I definitely owe him a lot for teaching me that even at the time, probably I didn't really, I didn't really realize it. So the, the tough thing for me was when I decided to go out on my own. And man, that was, that was hard, that was scary. When I decided to do it though, was actually getting up the courage to tell him about it. Tell him I didn't wanna work for him anymore. Tell him that I wanted to be in business for myself because I didn't know how he'd react. I mean, I, at the time I was one of his top men. I was really the number two guy for him at 19 years old and you know he relied on me he, I was I was a really good worker for him and he could count on me so telling him that I didn't want to work there anymore I felt like I was letting him down really so the hardest thing really was getting up the courage just to say hey um, I won't I won't use his name here but just say just say hey you know can I talk to you for a minute in private and I, I'm sure if I'm sure I was shaken when I told him and he, he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were actually at his house. You know, I was over there at my girlfriend's house. So when I asked him that, you know, we went in and we talked. I can still remember the conversation like it was yesterday, really. But um, and I, I told him, you know, I just said, hey, you know, I think. I think I want to try working for myself. I want to try, you know, having my own business. And he, he was actually kind of supportive. But I, but I got to admit, man, that was hard going from not knowing what, how he would react, I guess, to asking or telling him that first. And then, anyway, I said, you know, just like most people would say, well, I'll give you my two weeks notice, blah, 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 and all that stuff. And, and that all worked out fine. And then, you know, obviously I was still going out with his daughter. Like, like we didn't break up because I didn't want to work for him anymore. But that was probably the most difficult thing was just getting that past that point 
of getting up the courage to tell him what I wanted to do because basically, you know, I'm still 19 years old. I'm still a very young, young man. Uh, haven't experienced a lot yet. And even just the fear of really going into business for myself, that was a lot too to handle. I didn't know what, I didn't know how to run a business. Um, it was just me at the time. I didn't, you know, I didn't have anybody working that was going to work with me at that moment. So I just knew that I, I knew that I wanted to work for myself. There was like an inner calling in me. Something inside me was telling me that I don't want to work for somebody for the rest of my life. I want to I want to figure this out and do this on my own. I like I knew how to pour concrete like we're doing right here, you know, screeding, bowl floating, power troweling, all that stuff. Like that stuff was easy at this point. It was all the other stuff that really came hard and I, I knew that somehow I'd figure it out. And I did have another guy uh, that was a good friend of mine. He actually did like concrete walls like you see here, the foundation walls. And he he was like, Mike, I'll, I'll hire you to do all my floors. You know, he probably did, I don't know, 50 or 60 of these foundations a year. So I knew I knew I'd have that guy's work going into this. So that helped. And, <clears throat> but I'm telling you, once I did finally go on my own, you know, I didn't, it was, it was, there, it wasn't busy every day. That's for sure. It's a good thing I was only 19 and I didn't have a house. I didn't have a family to support because things were pretty rough that first year. There wasn't, there wasn't like, it was, we were actually in a recession. It was, it was a long time ago, but we were in a recession and there wasn't like a ton of work going on. It's probably like the worst timing of all, but I figured out a way to make it, make it work. And then Another guy uh, ended up being, I ended up being partners with another guy. You know, he was actually one of my best friends at the time. And that didn't end up working out. It worked out great at first, you know, for the first year or so, year and a half. But then we ended up splitting up. He went his own way and I went my own way. And that actually, you know, ended up being probably the, it, was, it wasn't only the hardest decision of my life, but it was probably the, ended up being the best decision of my life getting up the courage to ask or tell that guy I wanted to be on my own and then, you know, figuring it all out and then being on my own like I am right here. So and I'll tell you why it's the best decision of my life here in a second. All right, so first truck down. He went a little over halfway, which is good. We'll blow this second one in here. We like these floors like this. There's nothing in the floor, no pipes, nothing to go around. They're all wide open. And then when you use the power screen there from MDW, it makes, uh, it really makes screening these things easy. So I guess for me, you know, one of the best things was the, I really enjoyed like the freedom of being able to make my own decisions on what I was going to do that day. And if, if it was pouring concrete that day, that was even better. If it wasn't pouring concrete, I still got to decide like what I wanted to do. I wasn't, I don't know. I just, it wasn't in my DNA to have other people tell me what I was going to do every single day. And then also decide like what they were going to pay me to do that. <laughs> like I wanted to have control of that. I wanted to have control of what I was going to do and what I was going to get paid. And if I wanted to get paid more, then I knew I could just go do more. And whether, whether it was working two jobs a day of these like this or working Saturday or working Sunday, I didn't care. But as long as I had that freedom to make that decision, that's really what I liked about being on my own. Now, let me know what you guys think about that. You know, let, down in the comments, have, have some, uh, some of you other people had to make really tough decisions like that? I'm sure you have. And if you, you know, if you don't mind sharing them, great. Uh, if you don't want to share it, just say, yeah, I've had, um, you know, I can relate. I've been in that same boat. Now, on the next video I make, make sure you follow. I'm going to reveal, like, what my biggest flaw was as a brand new, like, business owner. Something <laughs> something I didn't realize at the time, but what I realized as I get older, man, I, I really screwed this part up. But, you, you know, it's I'll, I'll talk about that. That's another whole video. Um, and... And anyways, enjoy the rest of this video. Let me know if you like these kind of videos and we can do more of them. I'll get that, yeah. Yo! 
right. I think we're done with this, Paul. Thank you. At this point, the concrete was setting up on us a little bit. It was still chilly in the morning, so we always add a little bit of accelerator because as you can see, like the part of this will still be in the shade for quite a while because the walls are so tall. And the part in the sun will dry still pretty good, but the part in the shade won't dry at all. The part over on your left as you're looking at it right here. So if you gotta add a little bit of accelerator in the concrete to give a little kick. And at this point, it was setting up on us pretty good. Uh, doesn't take long usually so you got to be careful when you're using a power screed like this because if the concrete starts setting up too much then it becomes difficult to get it screeded with one of these because they're really not that heavy and we were right at that point where we wanted to stop moving Ooh, baby. that side was going hard kid this side I just want to check that right there Yeah, all was good. That was good and flat right there. Sometimes I just like checking myself. There's nothing worse than having a little dip in the floor. Uh, and then it rains, and then you got what looks like a big, huge puddle in there before they get the house on. So pretty easy just to check yourself with these things. The key, what we found, the key to running these is, uh, you know, just going slow and steady. The guy that's pulling back with the handles, keeping that board flat so it's kind of cutting as long as you don't dip it down too low, but you don't want to lift it up too high, so keeping it flat. And then just letting the guys doing the raking do most of the work. Uh, they want to make sure you're not low for sure, but not get it too high either, and then things go pretty smoothly. You want to go out and move him over a little bit? Yep. A couple good things here. One is, you know, running a power screed like that consolidates the surface, really makes it easy to bull float. So that's always a bonus. That usually speeds that up a little bit. And then using that bull float with the rounded edges, it it barely leaves a line on each side. You know, the square edge ones tend to leave a kind of a deeper bull float line as you push it out and pull it back. That's one thing we really like about those rounded ones is you hardly ever leave lines if you do it right. And then we really like flipping the chute over like that. <laughs> When we pour over the wall right at the very end, that makes pouring it real easy so the concrete doesn't splatter too bad. Right now I'm trying to get around Darren without hitting him, getting that handle into the bulkhead without hitting the wall. And then we can finish this little piece up and I can get that screed out of there. Ah. <sighs> 
Short rod right there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we will. Yeah. Good. You can grab it. Good. Yeah, so like I said, you know, you could see Darren's boot marks in the concrete. He was starting to set up pretty good at this time. So we just pull that ladder out. If we need a little bit more down there, we'll just drop it down in with a come along, a couple of scoops, fill the ladder holes, and then we'll just uh, kind of vibrate it with a come along right there and smooth it out the best we can, and then get the rest with the power trial when we jump down there. But it probably took us about an hour. It's about 1,400 square feet right there. We've got 18 and a half yards, four inches thick. Remember, we had water reducer in the concrete, so we could pour it a pretty loose slump. Concrete is actually kind of rocky today compared to normal, so that makes it pulling around even a little harder. But using the Viber screed makes screeding it pretty easy, especially with two guys like Luke and Darren behind there raking. So, again, it's a Friday. We're going to power trial this today. We'll get it all sawed today, and then we'll be done here. We can move out on to the next one. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.